Following the memorial of a 27-year-old who died allegedly in the hands of her parents as a result of coercive conversion, yet another female victim was abducted and confined for coercive conversion. However, she was recovered. This caused a huge media uproar and more than 2,000 people took to the street this past weekend in front of Christian Council of Korea's headquarters. A protest rally was held at the doorstep of the Korean Ecumenical Building in response to a grave case of religious suppression called coercive conversion that occurred in South Korea, a democratic country where freedom of religion is a guaranteed right. Coercive conversion programs are planned out and led by so-called conversion pastors within the Korean Christian Church. In a clear violation of the law, they use abduction, confinement, and assault as a means to forcibly change a person's religious beliefs. In 2007, a man incited by a pastor murdered his wife, and in 2018, a 27-year-old youth died at the hands of her parents. The entire world reacted in rage at the news. Overseas media, including New York Times, rushed to provide coverage on the stark reality of coercive conversion. But on 3rd of January, yet another woman in her 40s was abducted and confined for coercive conversion. She was recovered later on in a dramatic rescue operation. <laughs> As can be seen, the number of people that fall victim to coercive conversion programs is rising every year. The participants at the rally agreed that there should be no further victims and called out together for a swift end to be put to coercive conversion programs. Coercive conversion is a symbol of an atrocious suppression of human rights. Legal punishment against conversion pastors and the enactment of a law banning coercive conversion programs is needed now more than ever.